Welcome to Partners in Prevention. I'm Jennifer Stein with Prevent Child Abuse Habersham. Each month, we enjoy bringing to you various information about resources in our community to help build strong and healthy children. Today's no different. We're gonna be speaking with Macon Wren. Macon is a parents as teachers educator. And this concept of parents as teachers, Macon, is, is not new. Um, our organization, we've had the Parents as Teachers program since 2008, and I know we've served over, I think, 160 families, which is really exciting. Um, and so we're happy for you to come today so you can help educate the viewers as to all the different things you do as a parent educator. Um, so let's start off a little bit about, you know, what exactly is Parents as Teachers? Okay, well, Parents as Teachers is a in-home visitation program where I go in and meet with the parents um, and share with them what uh, can be helpful for raising their, their little ones. Very good. So, um, as a parent of three, uh, there's lots of help that I needed along the way. The, um, what's the age group that you're typically serving? And I know you said you go into the home. Um, so what would that age group be? So moms that are still um, expecting and goes all the way up to um, when the child enters kindergarten. Okay, very good. So with that, um, that's a lot of preschool. It is, it okay. is. So I come into the home and I'm, I'm kind of like bringing a preschool teacher with me. And so I work with the families and we work on ABCs and numbers and colors and, and really build that foundation for those children so that they're ahead once they get there to Head Start or, or to kindergarten, wherever they you know, may go in, this, in their educational process. Wonderful. And for you, this is second nature because your background is early childhood education. It is. It is. I have a bachelor's degree in early childhood. Um, so I, I went to Piedmont and I have that and I just bring that with me. Um, I've taught before in a classroom um, so that, that I bring that with me and, and you know foster that kind of environment with the family and, and really get them ready um, for the classroom. Very good. And then you also um, are trained in what's called Better Brains for Babies. I am, I am. So I also work on a brain development with the families, um, sort of the architecture of, of what's happening in the brain at different stages, um, at different milestones, so that they're reaching those milestones, milestones so they understand really what's going on. Um, even when the baby can't talk yet, they're still learning and taking in a whole lot. They're really like sponges. Okay. Now, does this program cost people money if they want to enroll? It does not. It's actually provided by a grant, so it is available for free to the families here in Habersham. Okay, okay. So with that, um, you were mentioning, uh, you know, brain development, things like that. Let's talk about a little bit about what a typical visit looks like. Okay, so um, I would go into the home and we would work on, on different things. Um, first visit is a little different. We're building rapport. Um, we're getting to know each other. Um, we're getting that com comfy, cozy feeling. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're getting to know, I I'm getting to know the little one. And so kind of understanding where they're at in their development. Sometimes I get the babies right out of the hospital. Okay. Um, sometimes I get them and maybe they're a little bit older. Um, but still we're working in that area of, of baby to, to five. Okay. Um, five years and so we're really just um, you know encouraging um, that growth and we're working on milestones reaching those milestones okay. um, we do screenings also based on where they should be based on other children their age okay. what they should be doing and and how they're developing on an emotional level on a developmental level so how they're you know um, their motor skills so okay. all of that we're, we're working on those things okay so a lot of um, exchange of information. Yes. Now, um, with the exchange of information, uh, if you're screening a child, what if you're noticing that they're not in that normative range? What happens then? How can you, you know, what things do you do? Well, I bring activities with me that can increase the development in any areas that they're struggling with. Okay. Um, we talk about different things that they may be already working on, um, or, or maybe they just need a little bit more um, um, information about what they could do to increase those skills. Okay. Um, but bringing activities with me, and then I also, I, I talk through that screening with them mm -hmm. and let them know, you know, what these different things mean. and, and the, you know, if their child is just a little bit above the cutoff, we still want to work on those areas just to make sure that they're, you know, where they need to be by the time they get into kindergarten. Building that strong, strong foundation. 
Now you talked that you are, um, I'm kind of deviating away from the visit, so forgive me for a moment, but you were talking about this, this background of this Better Brains for Babies. And with that, some of the research I found is from prenatal up until they're entering kindergarten, maybe it's around age three, I'm trying to remember now, it's like 80 million neurons that that brain is growing. So after a baby's born, that g brain still has to grow like another 83%. So, w I mean, it's just overwhelming that, you know, we think that we, we did well prenatally, we, we ate well, um, we exercised, you know, all that brain power. But when they're born is when all the things are on fire. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. A lot of things are happening in their brain. Um, just because it may seem like they're, they're really not um, interacting with their environment, they in fact are. They're taking everything in. They're, they're working on communication skills. The more you talk to the babies, the, the bigger their vocabulary is. Um, and, and you know, it's a great time for them to learn a second language. Um, so they may be a little bit um, slower to begin to communicate when there are two languages in the home, but it's a great time to learn when they are very young for that second language and they really do um, if if a second language is not introduced into that environment when they're little it in the brain what happens is pruning takes place and so those different areas those different neurons they disappear um, if, okay. if certain things are not if you're not happen, using them. if you're not using them if you're not growing if you're not doing um, different areas of development if that okay. environment that fosters that kind of learning um, isn't taking place then those different neurons um, they're they're not processing, so they're pruned. So it's like a tree, yes. okay, as the tree's growing, if you don't use something, right. you're saying it gets pruned. Absolutely. It's kind okay. of like gardening. So if there's, you, you plant a lot of tomatoes, but you don't need every single one of them, so you prune just a few of them, so the rest grow really well. So pruning okay. is a good way to make room for new things, because we're, we learn until we die. So that's a great thing to know, that we, we make room for all of the new things that we're going to experience and explore in our life. But babies especially um, need a lot of different experiences, good experiences, um, developmental experiences. Okay. Um, Okay, wonderful. I love, I love that visual. That's great. Um, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, I'd like to learn a little bit more because I know you mentioned the screenings yes. um, as part of the visit and getting to know them as part of the visit, but I know that you do a lot more um, when you're meeting with these families. So we'll take a quick break and um, we'll be right back and we're going to learn more about what Parents as Teachers does in the home when they come for a visit. Now showing on Windstream Cable Television Channel 4. Start your morning with a live on-the-air broadcast from WCON Radio. At 8, it's the Georgia Farm Monitor with the latest state and national agricultural news. Followed at 9 with David Sellers and his popular Art in the Mountains program, featuring arts and crafts and a lot more. And at 9.30, share a taste of the community with Jim Gear and friends. Windstream Cable Television Channel 4. It's what people are watching. Welcome back to Partners in Prevention. I'm Jennifer Stein with Prevent Child Abuse Habersham, and this month we're focusing on that early childhood development by zeroing in on a program called Parents as Teachers. Macon Wren is our guest, and she's a parent educator, and we've been talking about a little bit about the components of the visit, um, and before break we were really getting into the brain development, which is so intriguing. Let's go back to the visit, Macon. Um, what are some other things that you're helping to nourish uh, through your visits with the families? Well, we, we do foster that brain development, like we were saying, and then we also um, continue the process of um, different activities that we can do together. Okay. Um, sharing those different activities, the parent-child interaction is really, really important to build attachment and things like that. Um, bonding goes along okay. with that. So with doing different activities, one that's it's very important, very helpful um, in the developmental process is um, called Tommy Time. So it's the foundation, the very basic skills for crawling. Okay. And so um, as we know, we always want to put um, babies on their back 
um, for, sleeping. for sleeping purposes, yeah. but for getting them to start the process of crawling, we want to be with them when they're doing um, tummy time. So that would be when you're placed on your belly and they start um, keeping their head up. So their head's the heaviest thing on them and it takes a lot of work. It's a lot of work to keep that head up and to um, really work those muscles in their neck. And with a lot of practice, practice makes perfect with this process, um, they will begin to hold their head up and hold their shoulders up and really start getting their hands and their, their, sh their, their arms underneath them and start that process of, of rocking to where they can then begin crawling. Okay. So all of that. Roll over and all that. Now, if I remember, they don't like being on their tummy for long. They don't, you're right. And that's a struggle for a lot of moms because they don't want to, you know, put their baby in an environment that they struggle with. Right. Or but they start to cry. They cry. And they, get they do. And and you know, they're very good at telling you when they don't like something. Even if they can't use words, they're going to let you know, I'm not good with this. Mm -hmm. um, but doing um, that exercise, having that tummy time, um, providing different things for them to look at, to kind of draw their attention to different things, noises, putting toys in front of them so that they can see see it and they can try to reach for things so that starts the process of trying to get further and crawling. Um, all of those things can kind of um, almost distract them from the fact that, oh, I don't like being on my tummy, but I guess I'm going to be here. Right. But what's that in the floor? So it's a, it's a really good way to really foster that, that um, large motor um, movement and development that really is necessary. Very good. And so these activities that you bring are not necessarily activities that the child's going to go off and do on their own. These are um, activities that the parent and child do together. Yes. Okay. Yes. So there again, you were talking about the attachment, the bonding, just fostering that, that love and that nurturing. And you know, I, I think back and there's books out there, which is great, but having somebody to walk you through that that's okay, that they are going to fidget, that they're not going to be happy right away, that has to be really validating for these these parents. Have you experienced that? I have. I really have. I've seen a lot of parents who, you know, they're not sure at first and they really just need someone to let them know they're doing a great job. And and they just need someone to say, you know, just keep keep doing these little things that you're doing. Um, it may not seem like a lot right now, but you're really making an impact, a positive impact. You're really doing a great job with them and, and they really need you. Right. And so right. I could have used that. I would talk, it's like a personal cheerleader. You're, you're almost as if you're a personal coach because you're with them anywhere from two years mm -hmm. all the way up to five years. So if you got somebody that was pregnant right now, the goal would be that you get to partner with them until they enter kindergarten, right? Yes. I just think it's amazing what that child could benefit from having exposure to the in-home private preschool. Right. It's just amazing. Now. Another component that I know you love to do is the literacy. Yes. And I'm sure that goes back to your early childhood education days as far as being in the classroom. Tell me about what that part of the visit looks like when you bring these in. Well, literacy, like you said, is very, very important. Um, the more books that are in the home, the better chance that the, the child's going to be exposed to literacy. Um, literacy incorporates, um, you know, the love for reading. And if, if parents read, then their children are going to be avid readers as well. Um, it's not just enough, though, to have those books in the home. You really have to take that time to read to them and, and share what's, you know, that, that love. Like I said, um, statistically, okay. dads who read, their children are more avid to read and you don't necessarily have to just read the the basic average book I mean if dad reads the newspaper that's great anything that he's sharing those are good things but I do bring a book at every visit um, and we, they get to keep these books? they keep those books Wow um, talk about building a library yes okay. yes so they keep those books they read those books I also bring resources with me that work on different things with each book that's very specific to those okay. books um, some of those books that we I've, I've brought in is the Napping House, it's one of my favorites. Um, and and I, I myself am an avid reader, so I enjoy bringing it, that, that love and, and sharing that love with other adults and talking to them about their interests in reading, as well as incorporating, you know, how can they share that with their children. And so with a book like The Napping House, after they're reading it, you're even providing some additional things for them to do 
with the book. Right. Um, the Napping House involves um, its sequencing, and so there's a series of events that lead up to the climatic ending. Um, and so after they read the story, uh, the, the resources that are brought to the families with this book is having that sequencing, um, building. Sequencing, okay. Yes. okay. Yes, so what took place first, what took place next in the story, and then finally how did it all, you know, come about in the end, what was the end? So they're retelling you the story, which is great for memory, they're building memory. Um, they're able to, you know, identify different characters. Mm -hmm. So all of those things are, are really building the connection to the story, and they can also um, understand the connections that they have in themselves compared to the other characters in the book. So they're, they're making connections. I love it. Now, as a prenatal mom, um, I've noticed you've got a book here, you know, what to expect when you're expecting. Yes. So, yes, I'm sure you fill them in with these books too, so they start their library. But this is something you give them. Yes, we okay. do. When they're prenatal, I do bring this book with me and let them know that, you know, there's a lot of information out there, like you had said earlier, um, but this, it's, it's, been around for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. um, but what's nice about this book is it's not one that you have to read from cover to cover. It's a tomb. It's it's over. It's intimidating sometimes. Right. So you can pick specific things that you may be um, involved with in your pregnancy at that specific time. Okay. Find it in the index. Go back and read up on it. You know, a page or two, a page or there, and and you understand what's going on, and and you're you're good. And until feel there again, it's validating a concern, or it might prompt you to call out to your doctor. Wonderful. Um, well, this is, this is so encouraging, and it sounds as if you are truly building a, a deep bond with your families. We've got to take a quick break, uh, but when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about all the benefits that families can experience by being involved in Parents as Teachers. So we'll be right back. With cable television production studios in Habersham and Towns Counties, you're watching Windstream Cable Television Channel 4, home of local origination programming in North Georgia. From weekly church services to sports and community events, we've got you covered. Join us 24-7 for local programming at its best. Windstream Cable Television, it's what people are watching. Welcome back to Partners in Prevention. I'm Jennifer Stein with Prevent Child Abuse Habersham, and our guest today is Macon Wren. She's with Parents as Teachers, and she is an in-home educator, uh, helping parents realize that they truly are their child's very first teacher. And I just love the name of this, and it's, it's just so exciting. Um, we have gone on to the, the literacy, this home literacy environment that you're encouraging, partnering with parents, um, let's talk a little bit. I know you had mentioned that you do some screenings, we do the activities, the encouragement. You also mentioned about helping, just helping families. What, what does that mean for parents as teachers, helping families, this family wellness? Well, I get them in touch with different um, resources that are in the community. Um, building that relationship is also um, very important in knowing how can I best serve this family. Okay. Um, a lot of different families have um, different needs, but until I really dive in and, and build that relationship, I, I don't yet know what, what is it that they really seem to be struggling with. Okay. Um, so it may be that when we're doing screenings and I get, um, I refer them to their pediatrician. Um, if they have issues with speech and they would uh, benefit from speech therapy, then I'd get them um, referred to a speech therapist. Okay. Um, so with that, we also discuss if um, once they get in with speech therapy, if, if they need to set up like a, an IEP or, or with their school system and, and get that process kind of um, hold so their hand. So before they're in the school system, you can help guide them if they're needing speech that starts before school starts. Fantastic. And so with those type of links, you're really helping a child overcome a deficiency. And so that way when school starts, they're not losing any ground. Absolutely. They're, they're on par with their friends. Um, when we were preparing for this make, and you had mentioned a really neat thing, how when students start Head Start or start preschool um, or start at kindergarten, they typically score better than a child that hasn't been enrolled in parents as teachers. Absolutely. Uh, when they're in our program, they do score higher than their peers on the different um, uh, learning curves that they have. And so they're, they're kind of starting ahead um, as opposed to sort of behind. And that's, that's, that's sometimes that's what happens. 
I love this. So, you know, you've, you've got a wide range of families that you're serving, and what you're helping do is, is kind of raise the bar on possibly um, making sure that the, each child has the most successful start to kindergarten by, through this relationship. And I know you're with them for, you know, a, a good amount of time. How many times a month do you normally see them? Twice a month, typically, and those, okay. those visits usually uh, run about an hour, okay. um, but it, it can fluctuate just depending on what are those needs. Um, if they happen to be struggling with a, a, a really big issue and I can help in any way, then I'm going to stay with them until I can find some um, tools that can help them. Okay. So the family wellness might not be related to the child at all. It could be that a parent has shared with you a concern that they have for their own health, for their own needs you're then helping them to, so what are some other community resources that you've partnered families up with? Um, well, I have some that um, ne were, need, um, were in need of a wheelchair, actually, for their, their child, and so working um, with getting that for free with uh, the Disability Center here in Habersham. Okay. Um, sometimes it's more that um, parents need to go back and get their GED. So some goal setting. Goals. So we do set goals in the in the program. Okay. Goals could be for mom or dad. Goals, they could be for the child. It just all depends. It's the, the overall of everyone in the home. Um, how can we help? Very good. Well, and, you know, What's great as years have gone by is there are decades of scientific research that talk about these protective factors, that if the family unit's protective factors are improved, the chances of a child growing up to be healthy socially and emotionally and physically are, are, are better. Um, so you've got this helping link them up to community resources so that way if there's any concerns they're getting the support that they need you've got the you know parents having a better understanding of what their child's typical development you know that whole proactive they're getting ready to crawl let's make sure we do this um, but then you know the social connections that you're building what is, uh, you had mentioned that you also do regular groups. Tell me about what group means. So group is once a month. Okay. Uh, sometimes we do a group around community events. And so group is all of these families that are enrolled in parents as teachers. Right. They're all kind of members. Yes. Okay. Yes. So they're members of this really, really neat group and they come together once a month and they get to interact and moms and dads get to show, socialize. Um, children play together. Um, sometimes we have a guest speaker. We we do surveys at the end of our group just to make sure that the things that we're bringing in for those activities or for those people that are um, going to be guest speakers are really topics and things that parents really want to know more about. Um, so it's it's really an exciting time. We put a lot of um, planning into it um, and, and families really look forward to that opportunity, that, that extra recreational time to yes. spend with other families. Very good. Now um, some examples of some past groups. What, what are some of those that you've done in the past? Um, we've had a um, group at Pitts Park in Clarksville okay. um, during their Red, White, and Tunes. So they were able to enjoy um, water slides and fireworks. Um, we always have a meal with group. Okay. Um, so we've also experienced um, the... the Friday Night Flicks. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Um, so they were able to watch Inside Out on the big screen. Um, the kids oh, really... Love that movie. They loved it, loved it. So. Um, we, we've had an Easter egg hunt for um, our April month. Okay. Um, and then those are just blended in with others that maybe are just more informative for the parents. But the kids are playing. Right. Having a good old time. Right. And you have, um, and I know that this this will be airing at a time that it might be too late, but like even one you've got coming up that's on um, postpartum and perinatal anxiety and depression? Yes, yes. So with that, when that's coming up in September and uh, we have a guest speaker who's going to share her knowledge about this topic, it's a it's a really big topic that a lot of moms have struggled with and it's something that I've found that they, they really need these resources and, and starting a conversation about this is, is the first start in getting them um, support. Right. Right, and make them know that they're not alone. Right, yes. they are not alone, and, and a lot of moms do struggle with this, and it's not something to be, you know, concerned with sharing. Um, nursery will be available at that time, so child care. So we try to, we try to incorporate that. Well, as we approach the, the end of our time together, Macon, um, you know, it's uh, for 
moms and dads too, because dads can, are caregivers as well and they play a very important role. Um, I hope the viewers will recognize this supportive role that you play in so many families. Now you still have room, so if parents are excited about what they hear, or maybe there's some grandparents, because I know you also serve grandparents that are caregivers, um, if they would like to enroll in this program, mm -hmm. how would they do that? Um, they can give me a call. Okay. Um, and my number, mm -hmm. I mean, is that? Sure, yeah, Okay, we'll so that, that would be 706-949-6520. Okay, so 706 nine four nine six five two zero so they can call you maybe they've got some questions some underlying concerns that maybe they still have after watching this but um but otherwise you can then even first just go meet in the home with them sure. talk a little bit more there's no pressure right absolutely just because i come out that first time it could be just to get some you know more information about what you've heard today and you may find that you really you really want to be part of the program and i would love that wonderful well, locally, we have Parents as Teachers. If you want to know more about Parents as Teachers as a whole, you can go out to their national website because it is an evidence-based program. Macon, thank you for being here today and, and sharing what you do and the love that you have for the families that you serve. Well, thank you for having me. Very good. Thank you, and we hope that you'll tune in to next month's Partners in Prevention. Providing local origination programming to our Northeast Georgia customers, you're watching Windstream Cable Television Channel 4.